Hello again and welcome. Today's video is going to be a review of the Stratos FU230 wood lathe. A lathe I purchased from Simon Hope of Hope Woodturning and I got into the thought of having a new lathe after I'd been up in Harrogate on Simon's stand at the Harrogate show for three days working on the same model as this. There are a couple of features which sold me on the idea, the main one being the very flexible method of increasing both the length and indeed the size of bowl that you can turn by means of making that extension into an outrigger but we'll go into those details later on in the video. What I intend to do while the camera is at this angle is give you the basic spec of the machine and then we'll get up close and personal and have a detailed look at it. At the business end it has a two horsepower motor, it has a double uh, two-step pulley system and you can achieve revs of on the lower setting of um, between 80 and 1350 revs that's for much bigger pieces and more torque if you like and then the higher end goes from 180 to 3700 revs so more than enough range there on speeds and torque i will go into how easy it is to change the pulley etc later on in the video it has a, uh, an M33 by 3.5mm spindle and a two Morse taper both in the spindle and indeed in the tailstock. The length of the lathe as it comes standard is 1350mm, it's 510mm deep or wide and it's 1230mm high at its highest point. What comes in the package with the basic lathe is obviously the bedways and attached to that on the pallet is the headstock, the banjo and the tailstock. The accessories that come with it as standard are a four pronged spur drive, a revolving centre, a six inch face plate a spanner to remove said faceplate from the spindle and a nice little touch is the double-ended Morse taper which is used to recenter your headstock spindle with a tailstock spindle when you've either swiveled the head or moved it to the end of the lathe or indeed anywhere along the lathe where uh, the lathe beds so that's a very handy and a nice little touch because normally you have to buy these separately also in the pack comes a 14 inch tool rest which has got a nice shape to it, a nice form for the heel of your hand. It is a nice piece of kit. <coughs> Excuse me, I was also impressed with the size of the banjo giving you plenty of flexibility out from the lathe bed. Also included is a little shelf here for uh, with various little holes in it to put accessories in and that screws to the side of the lathe and also for the speed control unit on and off switch etc there's a little ledge here which screws onto the leg of the lathe as well so all that is covered the weight of the machine is a hefty 178 kilos so it's a nice weighty machine for stability. Before we go any further, I had a couple of questions and I actually asked the question myself of Simon regarding the motor being uh, the fan sucking in the dust etc from your turnings because on my other lathe it was facing that way. I have been assured and I've got no no reason to doubt the assurance that it's a completely sealed unit in there Simon's been using both this and its larger brother, the XL, for many years without any problem whatsoever. The one advantage of having the motor facing this way, it makes the whole lathe a bit more compact because otherwise it would be hanging out here. A small point but a relevant point regarding the dimensions but also no problem with the motor facing this way. 
one of the first things I noticed was how accurate everything is machined and as you can see here the point of the live center and the point of the full spur drive are exactly in line and they also are on a perpendicular plane as well. So starting from this end of the lathe what we have here is the control box which has the on and a large emergency stop switch. This switch here is for reverse and forward so you can actually sand in reverse should you so wish and this is the variable controller. Now this is magnetic now what happens is that this comes with a little shelf that you can put on if you should so wish there to house it normally. I've got used to over the years having this on my left hand however obviously I move it when I'm using um, turning bigger stuff because obviously then I don't have to go in to the line of fire to turn it off and on but that's a nice feature too. Now you can see down here this is the inverter now I forgot to mention in the beginning that does actually come separate. There are two mounting points on the lathe one on the left leg as it stands now and one on the right leg and you just merely by the means of four screws screw that in. Now I've got that on the leg I did see somebody posted a picture on social media that they actually had this on the wall behind and they'd done the wiring to to accept that that's fine but I, I like it here and I find it very handy. It has an on off switch here which takes the power completely away from the machine if you haven't turned it off from the mains and you only need to do that once click it off and that kills the power to the lathe completely so that's a nice feature too on previous lathes I've had or the previous lathe I've had and most lathes it's underneath the bed here but it doesn't have a switch so th this is an added feature for safety as well stock end you've got a really nice aluminium hand wheel here which is a very handy point to note and also there's a window here where you it has 24 point indexing and you can see the numbers through the window so you don't actually have to lift the cover to see the indexing numbers so you can index through the window quite easily. The way that you lock it into the indexing holes is by means of this knurled knob which is on a spring let's say we want it on number one so we put it on number one locate the hole and press in and turn and that locks the spindle in position one and then you merely difficult with the camera here undo the knurled knob let's say you want to go to number six so you move it to number six and then locate it and the same operation inward pressure and turn the knob and it's locked in position six and so it goes on so that's a very handy feature as well so moving on this little chappy here locks the spindle and that's for changing your chuck and what have you. You can see that little protrusion there. There was a similar, on the older models, there was a similar configuration to this where it was a spring which mounted into there for the spindle lock, but apparently they were experiencing quite a lot of problems with the end breaking off, so they went to the more common solution of the bar in the hole. So that's there. I've just put a bit of tape there, stop it marking the paintwork, how long that'll last I don't know. So that's there, a little rubber mat on top there. You've got your uh, readout here, your speed readout, and then here you unscrew and unlock the headstock and then pull this out and swivel should you so wish or indeed leave that in and when you have it locked and you want to slide the headstock you merely push it to the end of the lathe if you so wish or push it where you want and swivel at the same time. All moves very nicely and 
when you've moved it like this, this is when the double-ended Morse taper comes into play where you can realign everything up for centre turning. And to move the pulley from one ratio to another, you undo this clip, lift the lid, and then if you move, unlock the locking lever here, pull back on the handle, and that releases the tension on the belt. And if I can do it from this side, we'll see. And then move the belt to the desired, or the other ratio. There we go. Now there are two marks here, and the first mark is the tension required for the low ratio. And then you lock off the lever. There is a uh, on-off switch here. As soon as that is opened, it cuts power to the lathe with regards to the motor. And then you clip it back down again, and you're away to go. The other feature which impressed me quite a bit is if in the unlikely event you need to change the belt, it's not captive on the spindle, you can release it, you can feed it through on the edge of the spindle here, place, uh, take it over the hand wheel and then put the new belt on. So there's no need to replace bearings, take out the spindle, it's a very easy operation. As you'd expect with any machine of this nature, and this one seems to excel in it, everything moves extremely easily along the bedways and there is literally no movement in the tailstock whatsoever. And one of the things that really impressed me was the quill. Without locking the quill down, if I move it to there, let's say, there is absolutely no movement in that quill whatsoever. There's no slop at all. Very tightly engineered. Um, and that did impress me. And the other thing as well is that with that being the case, wherever your quill is in extension, however far out it goes, and it has a travel of four inches, um, it's not going to alter its aspect to the centre of the tail of the headstock. So that's another big plus as far as I'm concerned. And the main reason for me looking at this lathe, apart from the fact that I really enjoyed using it at Harrogate, was that I wanted the option of greater length as I've explained and also to be able to turn bigger bowls, bigger diameter bowls. Now my previous lathe gave that option, there was uh, an extension available, but you had to bolt it on and unbolt it when you didn't want to use it. Well, what I'll do now is change the camera angle yet again and we'll go through the extension bed that I got as an extra and also the brackets onto which you fix onto various points on the lathe of your choosing and once it's all set up, when you want to use it all you have to do is literally clip it on or hang it on I should say and take it off. It's as easy as that so we'll go through that process now. Now this is the extension, the bed extension and that comes in at 406 mil so that I increase your capacity lengthwise by a considerable amount and also you could you use this as your outrigger and I'll show you in more detail where I've placed the brackets. You can actually place the bracket at either end if you wish to do it that way to extend the length of your lathe and there are mounting points for this for outboard turning to increase your capacity to some 30 inches um, on both the front and the back of each leg and indeed on the end of each leg so you can actually turn outboard at the end or on either leg whichever you want to do and you obviously have to move the headstock also accordingly. Get a tool extension, a tool rest extension post which slots in your banjo and obviously raises your tool rest to sufficient height so that you can turn outboard. Now I'm going to show you the bracket system that is an optional extra. Now you can see here there's a bracket 
bolted to the end of the lathe and that's to give me the extra length and I've chosen this leg to put this bracket on for the outboard turning and that's just my preference at the moment. There are points as I've explained on three sides of the leg on both legs so you can actually put it wherever you feel is the best place for it. Now as you can see on the end of the bed extension there is a bracket which stays on there permanently fixed with four bolts. So that is your location for that bracket there and it's merely a case of when I want to use the extension I slot it in the bracket and job is done. A little bit of a lining to be done just to get it exactly where you want it. Now here also supplied is a little bolt handle and that goes into the centre hole there and that just gives it its rigidity and now that knob is tightened the tailstock will move freely to the end of the lathe. I have to do a little bit more alteration there but to be honest with you that's more than good enough because I'm not going to be using it back and forth all the time once it's in place it's in place. So now I want to do some outboard turning with some large diameter work. I've already got my bracket on this leg but as I've explained there are six points three on each leg where you can actually place that bracket. So I take my bed extension and I literally click it in, slot it in and it's done. Now it also comes with a support leg and that simply slots in here and you would you alter this leg here to the length you want and slot it under there and then literally tighten tighten the bolts up against it. Now I'm not going to do it but that's the idea which gives you total support on this section here. The next thing to do is to get your banjo and slot that in as you would on your on your bedways. Okay so that's in there now then you take your extension and you lock that in place and now all that remains to do is to move the headstock up so again just loosen the lever and move along the bedway and then unscrew unscrew the locking lever here until it pulls out. Lift, pull, be careful you don't catch your fingers in there and spin the headstock around and it's indexed at 90 degrees. That's in there, lock it down. Move it to where you actually want it, lock it down and then all that remains to do is to put your tool rest in. Make sure it's all sorted and let's just pretend we have a piece on here. Put on your chuck and you're away to go. Simple as that. Now I'm intending to turn here. Uh, this is my half inch bowl gouge. I'm going to have plenty of room behind me um, so there won't be a problem there whatsoever. And then as you can see that gives me a really big capacity to turn should I so wish. Well I suppose I better turn it on just to show you it does work. So if you press the green button that gets the power and the inverter going and then use your knob to increase the speed now doing 3760 always remember when you've got a vary speed to turn it down to zero before you switch off 
or if you are going to keep it going and you have to and you want to switch off at that speed do it that way but make sure that you turn it to zero before you switch back on again uh, don't tell me how I know this is a good thing to do it would have saved a couple of long stem goblets going west um, an interesting point as well is that when you actually press that stop button it cuts out the inverter as well with my previous lathe that stayed on all the time until you switch the power off for the mains so this actually separates the inverter as well I can gather because it goes completely silent. And one little point to note I just put a shelf there are two mounting parts on the legs where you could put two shelves on if you should so wish but I decided just to put the one I've used three quarter ply with a bit of a, a stretcher in the middle and um, I place in the extension bed and the extension tool post on there which not only keeps it in a place out of the way it also adds a bit more weight not that it needs it but it's there um, and it's very handy to get at when I want it well I hope you found that of some interest I make no apologies for the length of the video because I was trying to cover as much as I possibly could to give you a really good insight into what this Stratos FU230 is about. All the links to Simon's website etc will be in the description below. If you've got any queries or questions you can either PM me or you can mention them in the comments below or indeed contact Simon and he'll be more than happy to answer any queries that you might have. Incidentally if you do decide in the future or whenever to go down this route and purchase this lathe the basic lathe not with the extension etc if you don't want that extra um, if you mention the fact that you went to Simon from this video then he will include a number one sanding set which is a very versatile and handy piece of kit to have in your armory okay thank you very much indeed for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very soon cheers now